Okay, we are recording. So welcome to the Ultra Running Sam podcast, Simon Roberts. Yes, Sam. How you doing? Yeah, good, mate. Yeah, recovering quite well, actually. Yeah, yeah. yes. So the, the, this, the, for, for, the, for the listener and the viewer, this is uh, how many days? What day is it? Wednesday. Four days, four days removed from you. Storm into victory at the at the like you say the Cheviots or the Cheviots. I, I people say it a different way, don't uh, they? Uh the Cheviots and the, the locals yeah, call Cheviot. it the Cheviot. So I, th- I think yeah. they're right. The yeah. Cheviot goat, yeah, which is um so just um no, I, I won't go into the race, but basically it's a uh, is it fifth what is it fifty nine miles? Six, yeah, almost sixty miles now. Yeah, they may as well start marketing it as 60 miles yeah, yeah 60 miles because i always thought it was a 50 miler for some that's reason that's what they put that's what they marketed as but yeah no it's always like 60 miles yeah yeah like 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 any good ultra they, they always lie about the distance don't they? definitely yeah <laughs> and they lie about the uh the vertical climb as well yeah <laughs> everybody's uh everybody's watch is different so yeah, everybody's thinking i should be finishing by now but they're still on the course for another few hours <laughs> Yeah, I was I was uh, always like gutted. The first like official proper fifty miler I ever did was Lady Bower fifty up in the Peak District, and and I was like fifty miles, yeah. And and uh, I remember getting like being on the last loop and getting to fifty miles. I'm like, this, I, I know that there's, there's another four miles to go. This is not fifty miles. <laughs> being really annoyed, and then yeah. the guy I was running with was just like, you'll you'll understand when you've done more ultras that this is just how it is. You just they just lie to you. That's it. That's it. That's in the way you put in it. Yeah. They just, <laughs> they are these just liars. <laughs> right. So we've established the ultra running. Yeah. Look, a big lie. Right. Um, so what I do with with all the guests is um, just to get sort of a, a backstory, your your origin, your superhero origin story, but where where you sort of where you began in running and how you've got to the place where you are now, where you like storming big races and, and winning big races. How where did you come from and how long did it take you to get to where you are and you know go as far back as you like? Yeah. Yeah, it's not that far back really. I'm I'm 35 and I started running all fitness when I was 25. My sister signed me up for one of the obstacle course races, like rat race or something like that. So that's where I started, like getting into fitness and things like that. And um, yeah, I just kept on doing loads of those races. And then I was enjoying the running side of things. So yeah, that's where I gradually just went into. I just wanted to do running. So started doing like half marathons and 10Ks. Um, then I took on my first ultra marathon, which is one of the ones in the, the back of beacons. Um, and I done man V horse as well. That was one of my first races. That was a, my first mountain race, I'd say. Um, and yeah, I wasn't competitive or anything back then. Just doing it all as a challenge, doing it quite regularly. Yeah. I was doing like a, a race every month. Um, lots of running, enjoying it, but yeah, just definitely wasn't, wasn't serious. Um, so just cracked on with loads of races for years, got a bit of uh, experience. And then I say my first proper race was um, 2019 Dragons Back. So um, yeah, first multi-day ultra race. Um, done quite well with that, really. Again, I wasn't exactly competitive. But I was in the top 30, which was a nice surprise. Um, then moving on from that, then, but after that race, I started getting a bit of a bug and I started to learn how to train properly um and yeah i improved greatly quite quickly actually i just started messing with my training doing some speed work and stuff like that um and then i'd done the first cheviot goat in 2000 my first to achieve it goat in 2019 where i come third so that was my first podium um yeah and that's when i um I beat john kelly which at the time i was very very proud of because i was a big fan of john <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I still am a big fan. Um, yeah, and then um, COVID struck. So how I got through COVID was basically I trained my way through COVID and I came out of the other end of that super fit. And then I think like the, the first that year was 2021. And um, yeah, I won a lot of races then. I won um, Lake Sky Ultra. I won Race Across Lodonia. And then I... Was my first big win then was the uh, two thousand and twenty one Dragons back, 
Um, yeah, and that's uh, that's where I've um, cracked on since. Yeah, so I've um, picked up you know with sponsors and all this and whatnot, and I've won many more races since as well. So yeah, and um, yeah, that's how I got here today. Mm, that's how you got to it. So the first time I sort of heard of heard of you. Um, I saw you come into Middleton on, so that would have been, was that 2022 Challenger North? Was that, you do Challenger North? Yeah, the Challenger winter, North, winter I'm Chal- trying to think what year it was, 2022 yeah. must have been. Yeah, the 20th, yeah. Don't you, don't it was, yeah, it was, it was after Dragon's Back, yeah. Yeah, so that, that winter, yeah, that yeah. winter, the January of the following year. Yeah, so yeah, um, that, yeah. That, that was the north, but I did do the full spine race um, just before COVID struck. So that would have been the 2020 spine race, the full winter one. So I've done that. Um, yeah, so I've um, got, got, had, got a bit of experience with that race now as well. Mm. Just um, just your mic's just like popping and making noises. Yeah, I don't know if right. it's I've, got, the, I've got my dog who keeps jumping on me. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about dogs. We're a, we're, we're a welcoming pop, podcast. Yeah, right. We like animals. I was like pushing him off the screen. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I, th- I think um, so. That was the first time I'd sort of um, seen you. Ne- uh, sort of, I-, I was at Middleton, and you you came in there and. Um, and I think I asked I asked you how far you'd gone, and you you had you had no clue um, how far you'd gone or anything. Um, oh, you looked in a bit of a daze. <laughs> <laughs> so that, what was that race like for you? Because did you struggle towards the end of that? Um, wasn't at the end. I had a bad, bad patch on uh, Hadrian's Wall. Yeah, I was coming to a bit of a stop, and I was having um, I was I, I was a bit sick as well, so um. Mm. Yeah, I'd have a bit of a rest on Hadrian's Wall and a bit of a sleep as well. Yeah, I had a 10 minute nap, just lying in the grass. Um, was sick a bit after my nap. Um, I managed to get my speed going then. I was quite fast then going on the last section of the Cheviots. Um, yeah, but yeah, that race, no, yeah, I went quite fast. Yeah, um, moved quite well just apart from that, that section of Hadrian's Wall. Um, is that um is that is that something that you've encountered before um like this sickness because I've only ever been I've only struggled with my stomach in in summer races with the heat and stuff is, is that something you've you've had before in winter races Yeah, it's just I get from too much sugar, too many gels, and not enough proper food. Um, yeah, it always happens. So yeah, you know, I, I'll be thinking about that in my for my nutrition plan for the spine race coming up next month. Yeah. Yeah. What what what's what are your reasonings on on that then? So you've done you've done the full spine before then. Yeah. What yeah, I, did, I, did, I did I done it quite slowly because I got injured pretty much on day one, twisted my knee. So running was pretty much out of the question. So it was just just a, a bit of a fast hike. But um yeah, I teamed up with Trish Patterson. She who's also she also injured her knee as well. So the pair of us just limped our way up the Pennine Way. Yeah, which was a still a great experience. Yeah, I loved it. Um, yeah, it was a it was a slow one, so definitely back for next month to uh, pick up the pace a bit. Yeah, yeah. So, how are you feeling, sort of going into? So you've you've had that experience of, of you know that you know the route, you've done the full route before. Um, you've got lots of experience now in the Cheviots and bombing across there. What how how do you feel? It sort of leading into the spine race because it's a it's an all star lineup, isn't it? This year, if you looked at the uh, yeah, the, 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 yeah, it. it was a it was a good lineup anyway. But now um now they've added John Kelly, yeah, so he's obviously going to spice things up as he always spices everything up for whatever race he's doing. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see what his tactics are this year. I'm sure you know he's going to mix it up. Um, yeah, but yeah, no, you know, he's got all the regulars and got Damo and Jack as well and Kim. So um yeah, it's gonna be a good one. Who's, who's who's your who's your money on other than yourself, obviously? No, oh, none of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think um I, I I've I, you know I've been I've been thinking about this because I'm I'm doing a, a podcast with um, with Will and the uh, media team from 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 the spine this uh, next week, and uh, and we were sort of throwing ideas about about 
around about who's going to do well and everything. And it was, you know, interesting development with with John coming back and everything. Even I interviewed him like literally probably like, you know, it seems like it was only a month ago and he was like, oh, no, no, I won't be coming back to the spine. And then and, uh, he obviously can't um, keep... He teased up. it, I think it was at the beginning of the year. There was a post, he posted something. It was yeah, early on in the year, he posted something about spine race. And um, yeah, he had everybody wondering if he was going to come back. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I was... I was speaking with because I was obviously racing with James Nobles uh, on TV yes. Coat, and we and him were chatting about John, you know, whether he's going to turn up or not. And then the day, day after we finished, and uh, his name went on the list. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. Isn't it? So yeah, so so obviously we have dive straight into the spine race, but I wanted to talk to you about the goat. So yeah, you mentioned James James Nobles. How so? How did that race pan out for you then? You know, because obviously this you've won that race before, haven't you? So you, d- did it. Did it go to plan? Did everything feel firing on all cylinders, or, or anything? Anything new crop up? Um, yeah, it went, went pretty well actually. Um, I obviously knew. I know James. I raced James before. Um, he beat me at the two thousand twenty two Dragons Back. Um, so I know he's a great racer and he can endure hard things. So he was always going to be there. Um, yeah, we we started. Off, we started off quite fast. Not not stupidly fast though really. It was um it was a good pace. And I was with him for about an hour or so. Um and then I just kind of kind of just kicked on and um yeah, it was pretty comfortable for a good while. Um the only issue that I had straight away was um I had a stitch. So I was I was very drunk too much. So I had to uh wait the stitch out for uh, an hour or two. But um yeah, once that went then yeah, I was um flying again then. Um the only thing that was slowing me down was mainly the terrain, the snow and the bog mixed. Yeah, it was uh, it was pretty tough and slow going. Yeah, it really uh, zapped the energy out of your legs. So um, yeah, that, that's why I found the hardest of this race. Yeah, yeah it's, it's funny this time of year, isn't it? Because you know sometimes you, it, when it's frozen, it can be a bit of a blessing, can't it? On boggy stuff that it can yeah, be... I mean we hit the first bunch of bogs and they were frozen. And I was thinking, oh, happy days, we could just fly across all this. But they were. It wasn't thick enough. You were. You you were. You were jumping through the ice, and yeah, it was. It really hurt in the shins when you're going through it. Yeah, um, as in cold as well. But uh, yeah, it was tough. It was tough. I, um, I've done the race twice before, but the conditions were really, really slow and really hard this year. Yeah, it's a different beast when you've got got weather conditions like that. Mm. Yeah, because the the snow came. The snow coming. There was snow. Snow was already there. Did it? Did because we all it, got it the was snow. Already there. Yeah. Um. From the lower parts, it, it wasn't too bad. It was. It could move fast. As soon as we started getting to the high places, yeah, it was getting. It was quite thick then. There was quite a lot yeah. of it. Yeah, it was really um really tough to move move through it. So do you feel like this? This is sort of like um. Do you feel like it's sort of a standard thing that if you're doing the spine, it's it's a race that. Because it, it seems to be a race that everybody wants to do in preparation for the spine. Do you, do you feel like it's it's required or or do you feel like compelled to do it in, in um, preparation? I, I don't think it's a requirement, but it's a big help. It'll give you, like you said, it'll just give you a big idea of what to expect. Um, not many people go to the TVS because it's so far up north. But mm. yeah, and yeah, it's, you're going to be in the similar conditions that are going to be in the spine race. So yeah, but that's that's prepared me well, I think now because if we could if we're gonna have snow, I've I've never done a spine race with snow, I don't think like that anyway, proper snow. So yeah, I, I'll know what to expect if we have that type of weather next month, mm. which we could do. Yeah, it's, it seems like winter has come fast this year, doesn't it? it yeah, seems like it has. Yeah, last yeah. year it was um, snow didn't. Yeah, the snow came in the race, didn't it? But it was like halfway through the race, wasn't it? But now it just feels like. It could snow any day, <laughs> leading yeah. up to it. Mm. Um, so just um, before we were recording, we were just chatting and um, we, were, we were talking about um, injury. So what's you? What's you sort of? You've had a bad, bad experience over, over the last year with with was it injury or injuries that you've been it, struggling with? Injuries, pretty much. Yeah, um, yeah. The stress factor from Dragons back last year. I had that for, for quite a few months and then I just went straight into um, a torn groin then which um, yeah 
so I didn't really st I didn't start running then until July this year. So it's been a been a pretty crap year running wise. Yeah. Mm. Did you do you feel like it's um I know you've had a great result at the at the go. So do you do you feel like you're running sort of come back now in in time ready for the spine, or do you feel do you feel like it's um you've missed out on a few months of of training base training or anything? No, I think it's there now. Yeah. Um, the way I was moving on the goat, I was really happy with it. Um, the only thing I, the only thing I what did go wrong was my eating a bit. I think just because my stomach's not used to being hammered with gels, uh, you know, I haven't had the practice. So um, yeah, I need, need to sort out my eating again, and uh, I'll be all right for the spine. Yeah. What what sort of your what's your pr approach going to be with nutrition then for for the spine race? Are you are you um do you try and rely more on the fast energy sources gels and stuff or you'd go in for so obviously there's like a, a plethora of food at each checkpoint and stuff but what are you what are you what are you planning for in between um i try and minimize the gels and all that lot, as much as i can and concentrate on real food i think um yeah just to try and keep keep the time happy as possible um try and try and get like regular proper meals into your belly so it thinks it's just a, a normal thing um, so it'll behave for you during the race and not give you any issues. And yeah, I can't really handle hammering like achieve it goat, you know. I done thirteen hours of just gels, which wasn't which wasn't good. It wasn't comfortable at the end. But yeah, no, so I won't be doing that at the spine race. Yeah. More <laughs> more real food. Yeah. Sandwiches, pork pies, yeah. pasties, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And some some lasagna at Ulster. Yeah, Ulster lasagna. I'll be going for like five bowls, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's a record in there. Somebody has like seven. Yeah. Is it seven? Seven. Uh, seven. Like that, yeah. Seven portions of lasagna. I, well, when I was at, I did the, the summer uh, challenge in off, uh, and I had three. And I was I was uh, I was pleased that I'd had three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Looking um, up. <laughs> So, sort of, um, you're racing over the last few months, and you've um, you just noticed you've been doing some shorter, faster stuff, have you? Yeah, been uh, doing some local fell races in the beacons. So oh, yeah, I won um, I won a fell race. I was won my first fell race actually. So I usually do well at fell races, but I'm, I'm ne I never come first. And it was only a two mile fell race, so really sharp and short, nasty. Like if you like, you know, it makes you want to spew at the end. But yeah. But winning that gave me a lot of confidence. I was thinking, yeah, my fitness must be must be there if I'm um, doing well in a race like that. So um, yeah, it was good. It's um, I, I suppose I spoke to um, Jack Scott. He was saying about this that he, you know, for for someone who's concentrating on the bigger races, longer races, throwing in short and sharp stuff is is really good because obviously you yourself coached, aren't you? Because you're you're a coach yourself, aren't you? Coach. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've I did. Coach business about a year ago now. Yeah. Yeah. So, how, what made you sort of take the plunge with doing that then? Um, I don't know. It was somebody asked me on you on um, Instagram if I do coaching, and uh, yeah, just kind of just morphed from there. Then, um, yeah, I started doing a little coaching group in Cardiff on Sunday mornings. Which had a little bit of a gang of people who had done that. But um yeah, I stopped because I was injured, so I stopped doing that and uh, wasn't really happy standing around watching everybody run around and I couldn't do anything. <laughs> so uh yeah, I'll um I'll get that going again soon, I think, after Spine Race. Yeah. But yeah, and no, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed um, group, um coaching a nice group of people on Sunday mornings. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose people are after that that sort of knowledge and experience that you've got now from doing these these big races it's not you know not every coach in the country has got that kind of you know experience and knowledge to to be able to you know if, if somebody's thinking about doing one of the big big rounds and the race and the you know big race like the you know the doing the spine or or doing dragons back then there's not that many coaches out there that can sort of say yeah take that one off I can you know I can coach you to do yeah. that not that you not that you need to have done those races to to be able to coach somebody to do a race like that but i suppose the experience really helps them to giving people that confidence yeah i mean there's the, those are the races uh, the guy the, um, my, my athletes are doing i think a lot of them do dragons back so um yeah 
Yeah. What what sort of makes you keep going back to the dragon's back then? I know it's obviously like a it would be in in your back in your backyard. Yeah, it's, it's it's my residency. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just logistically it's really easy for me. <laughs> you gotta get a bus to Cardiff <laughs> and bus to the start <laughs> and run home. <laughs> <laughs> But no, um, yeah, no, I just absolutely love that race. Love the whole experience, the camp life. Um, meeting the friends I've met there, met some of the best mates ever. Um, so yeah, that's why I keep going back to that one. It's, uh, it's really special. Yeah, I love it. Mm. What's so sort of what's what's you been been your, you know, out of all the races that you've that you've done well out. What's what's been your favourite experience? The one that you sort of your the the thing that you you'll always remember is it is it winning dragons back yeah that's definitely one of my highlights yeah can't uh that was such a good day that was yeah uh, that was amazing uh, i was like you know the first person to finish in cardiff castle um all my family and friends were there um it was just an epic day that was yeah i'll never forget that it was amazing yeah and um it was just amazing it was an amazing week yeah uh you shocked myself for how hard i could run yeah i <laughs> didn't expect to go that fast you know um but yeah what, what a week that was so that, that will always stick with me yeah Lo local boy done good <laughs> yeah yeah so the first welshman to win it as well so that was a that's a good uh good record to have yeah that's it yeah that's the one you want to have in it yeah. definitely um sort of um going forward then what's your sort of now you're feeling like you're getting back to fitness again and you obviously got the spine coming up very shortly what's your sort of your long-term plans as far as races because you you know you're ticking off all the big big races if what what sort of plans have you got going forward for, for bucket list racing yeah my, I, I didn't really put much of a plan in place at the minute as I was still testing my fitness I mean I was still I was going to see how I did achieve it goat if I could survive that injury free then I'd definitely do the spine which obviously I am um yeah um the only thing I got in the pipeline I got dragons back again <laughs> in September so my name's already down for that um um but yeah I'm pretty much open open uh, now so um yeah I need to start looking at the start looking at races what's available I'd like to do something different I was, supposed, I was supposed to be racing in Italy in September for um, Ad, Adam, Adam, Adam Dello Ultra Trail. So I turned up to Italy and they, then they cancelled the race. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. Why was that then? Why was it cancelled? Uh, uh, thunderstorms. Right. Yeah. So I was watching the thunderstorms from my balcony and I was actually quite uh, quite glad I wasn't <laughs> running in that. <laughs> it was quite spectacular. But yeah. Yeah, so it's quite... I will be going back out to um to Europe, I think, a couple of times. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's it's funny, it's funny that it's, um thunderstorms. That when 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 I did um the challenge in north in the summer, that was, you know, it'd been really, really hot leading up to it and everything. And and I'd been to Corfu like a couple of weeks before and I was like, it'd been 30 degrees here, and I was thinking this is you know the perfect like um temperature training for the heat and everything of um of doing a summer race and then it was like on the on the day we set off it was like torrential rain full waterproofs <laughs> and um and obviously you, you know where that starts obviously like it yeah. i think the summer and winter starts are different on there but uh, summer starts at hard draw and you go straight up oh what is it can't remember the hill you go straight uh, great, up great shot of foul oh shot of foul that's it yeah, yeah. And as we were climbing up there in torrential rain, you could see at the top, like thunderstorms, like the thunder and lightning going across the top of the top of the hill, and, was, and you know, you're traipsing up there in like absolutely soaking wet, holding carbon fiber poles, thinking it's <laughs> a good idea. <laughs> you can see, and obviously, it like moved away as we got closer to it. So I think we were sort of fortunate to to get away with that one but i'm sure the uh, safety teams are watching that closely it's, it's unusual isn't it for a for, for a big race to get cancelled so do they sort of give you any sort of warning on on um you know whether they were going to put it on again like close to the time or anything um, like that they did they done it the weekend after but um i had, I, I, I work so i can't, can't get always get the time yeah. off yeah yeah that's annoying isn't it <laughs> yeah, i was quite lucky though i 
I had the flights and everything paid for me. So um, it was okay. And I'd done some training out there, um, got got to the high places. Um, yeah. So I, I, done, yeah, I had quite a good weekend. <laughs> free, free holiday in yeah. Italy. Definitely. <laughs> not too bad is it <laughs> um just so sort of um what i wanted to speak to you about is um so you, who do you who do you run for then who are your who are your main sponsors now then uh montaigne so they've always been my sponsor since dragon's back and um scarpa uh for shoes yeah so, so what about um what about the um you're not um sponsored i thought you were sponsored by uh silver oh yeah i oh, silver sorry yeah <laughs> yeah. Don't forget them. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'll need the head torches now when I now we're racing in the dark. Yeah, that's it. You'll need yeah. them. Yeah, and the carrots as well. Yeah, <laughs> the extra carrots. Um, so how does that sort of, how does that relationship, how did that come up, come about? So that was purely based on your performance. Uh, obviously, the Montaigne um, Dragons back. So that was how did that relationship sort of pan out then? Yeah, it was a. a it was almost straight straight from the finish line basically um that side i've always been a fan of montaigne and had loads of their kit um so yeah it was a ideal partnership really um yeah it was what i wanted so uh, i was really happy to get that one yeah, yeah. they make they make they make good gear don't they i know i've yeah, got, I've got they, the the, the pack the, i've got the um the gecko 20 plus pack that's yeah. like super, super, so comfortable. Like, yeah, so that'll be my, that'll be my spine pack. Yeah. Yeah. What are you? What are you going to use additional to that then? Because um, I have a bum bag as well, or a fanny pack. Some people call it. Yeah, fanny pack. <laughs> what yeah. What are you going to What are you going to have in 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 the in the pack at the front then? Um, things that I'll, I'll need probably bits of food, bits of snacks. I probably have the head torches and gloves and hats. You know things, things that come on and off, on and off. That's well mm. stow, stow in that. Yeah, stuff you need to get to quickly. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm, I'm asking all these questions because, because I'm, I'm in for the winter race as well. So, and right. I, yeah, I've got some gear to buy. <laughs> got some extra gear that I need. Um, but we're not talking about that. Um, the sort of that um relationship then with Montaigne. Do, do you? Do you sort of um, do they, they, I don't you know they won't put any pressure on you, but do you feel like sort of obliged to be doing all of the Montaigne races? Then is that how it works, or they, to give you a choice on what races you want to do? Um, th th there's no rules with Montaigne. They don't give you any rules. Um, you can do what you want. No, they they're really really good. It's just convenient that they support lots of great races. So yeah, <laughs> it's a it's just great really. Yeah, um, they've got. They've got some class races that they support. So it's, a, it's an ideal situation to be in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, that's it. Helps on it that they're you know sort of they're the flagship company for all the big big races. So that helps obviously getting into them. What about um, your shoes then? Tell, tell me, sell me, sell me some shoes. Yeah. Okay. So Scarpa uh, are my brand, and um, so I've been with them for two years now. Um, at the start, I was a bit apprehensive about them because they're a, an Italian brand. So their shoes then were, spe were specialized for European trails, you know, mm -hmm. so ultra trail shoes. So nice trails, nice path, nice paths and things like that in the Alps. Not what we got in, in the UK where we got shitty, boggy, mm -hmm. muddy, muddy stuff. But now they've, um, yeah, over the past two years, they've listened to me and all the other guys. And they this year they brought out the, um, the Spin ST. Which is their first fell shoe, and it is awesome. What a good shoe! It's one of the best. It is the best soft, soft ground shoe I've I've tried. So yeah, such a good company to to be with. It's great that they listen to us when we kept telling them that, you know, at the UK team we kept telling them that you know we have mud, we we need grip, and they've listened mm -hmm. to us. And um, so they've got the fell shoe, and they've got one of their other shoes, which is called the the Rebel. But now they've got that with six mil lugs on as well. So, yeah, it's great. Now they've got they've got a nice set of UK shoes. So, um, yeah, yeah, we're laughing now with them. Yeah. What what's your what's your shoe plan then for the spine as far as because um, well, obviously everyone has yeah, plans um, don't they for how many pairs of shoes thinking, and different sizes. Yeah, thinking well, um, my feet have no, never swollen on a race, so I don't really got any. 
up in size. Either I'll only go up in a size and I'll be wearing two pairs of socks. So if they're uncomfortable with two pairs of socks, then I'd go up half a size. But um, yeah, I think first half of the race, I'll go with a nice big cushiony ultra shoe. Um, they got the Spin Planet. I'll be wearing that for the first half, just to try to look after my feet as best as I can, really. And then um, I was going to go for a more grippier shoe, um, the 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 Rebel, uh, for the second half. Then as it is, it's more of a lot more mud on the second half of the race. So um, I think that's what I'll be doing for my my shoes. Just using mm. the two pairs. Yeah, so only two pairs. Yeah. Uh, what about a sock combo? Uh, the sock combo. Um, uh, like an in was it in Dingy? In Gingy, whatever the brand is. Yeah, let's get that name <laughs> um, wrong. They use um, toe sock, a toe liner sock for them, so just a thin one, and then I'll just a thick army sock on top of that then. Yeah. All right, so you you, not, you don't go for a for a waterproof sock then? No, I've tried waterproof socks before. My feet just get too warm in them, and then when they're wet and warm, they fall apart then, don't they? Yeah. I'd rather have cold, wet feet than warm, wet feet. Mm. Yeah, 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 and it was um, a few people sort of swear by the combo, the combination of um, the those toe, the toe socks, like liners, and then waterproof socks. And then, have you been on the the spine um, on the Facebook group? Have you been on there and looked at any of the posts on that? Do you go on there? Uh, I, I, was, I used to be a regular of that group, but no, I haven't looked on it at all, really. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, there's always, you know, obviously, like if you ask a question on there, you get a million opinions, don't yeah. you? Yeah. It's, not, some people it's, saying. it's funny it's a funny group to be a part of but it's not helpful <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah so some people will be like yeah waterproof sock all the way and other yeah. people will be like you know like Damien Hall sort of saying no don't go anywhere near waterproof socks um, and then sh like with shoes and stuff people saying yeah Gore-Tex Gore-Tex shoes waterproof like try and keep the water out and then other people are like once once the water gets in, it won't get out because it's Gore-Tex. So it's a bit of bit of a minefield. But obviously, you've you've had a few years of perfecting what works for you and everything, haven't you? Yeah, I've wore I wore Gore-Tex shoes on the Challenge North. Um, no no problems there. Water does water does get out. It's a big hole in the top of the shoe. <laughs> Your foot goes in. The water does come out. <laughs> you can always stop and just empty uh, it out. People are dramatic. People are dramatic on that group. <laughs> Yeah, they do love a bit of drama don't they on yeah. there on that. I, I interviewed uh lindley the, uh, last week yes oh, um, yeah. yeah, he, he's the man you email about the kit questions i bet you get some crazy questions <laughs> yeah yeah so i said i asked him you know do you ever get fed up with the questions and he was like well sometimes i'm pulling my hair out and rocking in the corner um but he was like but basically, I get paid to do it, so yeah. I just do it. So it's very no, nice. he's, he's great. He's a big help. And he messaged you back really quickly as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, was, that was the point I made to him. Was that I, you know, I, the first spine race I did was the, the very first um, sprint that they put on in summer of whatever it was, 21, something like that. And I emailed him literally the night before the race about some waterproof trousers whether they're okay and like got a reply within about like five minutes and uh and, and, I, and I thought at the time I was like this guy's got some time on his hands <laughs> but obviously it's not it's just that he's 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 on it with everything yeah and he, yeah he's the he's he expert um, that's it, yeah so yeah and he's he's there to keep us all safe yeah so, that's um, it, yeah. yeah that was it yeah so he's there to keep us all Keep us all in check. Yeah, absolutely. So, just sort of thinking, uh, thinking of the spine. Then, what's um, what have you got any sort of from previous experience? Have you got any sort of tactics that you're gonna sort of play out? Because I know that you have, you know, when I've spoke to other people before, I've spoke to like Jack Scott, and he was sort of saying for him, he would just plan to run with people up until Middleton and then decide what he was going to do. Have you sort of, and he'd sort of gone through this plan with a sports psychologist and everything. What's your sort of take on, on, <laughs> on, um, yeah, that, that kind of thing, the psychology of racing. Have you, are you would sort of make it up on the fly kind of guy or are you, do you go into a race? Cause I know I've, you know, in the 
some of the races, little local races that I've won, I've gone into them being almost convinced that I'm going to win, knowing that you're as fit as you can be and knowing the route and everything. Do you go into races with that sort of intent of knowing that you're going to race in a certain way and that you're going to get a certain outcome? Yeah, kind of. Um, I suppose all, all, all the other races I've done, though, they've been like, say, one-day races where you can just go out flat out. That's always been my tactic. Obviously, this is different now on the spine and full spine. So, yeah, I'll be actually playing things a lot differently to what I usually do. Um, yeah, I won't be sacrificing myself just by going from going too fast. So, but I think, yeah, I think you're just going to have to just take it as it comes on this race. Anything can happen. Um, so, yeah, I, I'll, I think I'll just be making up as I go along. I think that's the best way to approach it. Um, what about do you? What about running with people? Have you you sort of you know obviously you ran ran a bit with James in races before? Yeah, Is that run, run a bit could... with James? Um, run about quite a bit with Russell on that two thousand twenty one Dragons back. Um, yeah, I'm happy running with guys, and especially if if we come to the ball at the same pace, um, I'm happy to have a chat as well. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm happy to play that game as well. Yeah. So is that something you you've sort of used in the past, like with races, like teaming up, team teaming up with people to sort of make a, a race a bit easier, or do you? Is there times where you just want to get your head down and just get on um, with it? It's nothing. It's nothing like I really planned before. You know, you just just you just end up running with someone, um, and if they're cool to talk to and a, a good runner, then um, yeah, I'm happy to to chill with them. Um, yeah, it's just it's never really been planned. You know, I don't plan to, oh, I'm going to run with that guy or anything like that. Um, mm. Yeah. So. It's good for that ultra, isn't it? Just um, you you end up like making an almost like making a best friend, don't you, over the course of a race? Yeah. And some of the people I know, some of the people I, you know, view as good mates and people I've just randomly met in yeah, races. So I've got, um, got quite a few mates on the lineup for the spine race this year. So, you know, got some of the Scarpa guys, Montaigne guys. So, uh, yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be good. It's going to be good at the front, I think. Lads, lads, lads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or girls, 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 you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. What's yeah. what's Who's your pick for um, for uh, the women's race? Um, I'd have to say Anna, because I'm friends with Anna. So, um, Anna Troop. Um, she's done well on the uh, other race on the other uh, on other spine races, has not she? Uh, so yeah, hoping um, I'll be cheering for Anna. Yeah, there's um, also um, it's Claire Claire Barn Claire Banworth Claire Claire Banworth. She come in. Is I think she's coming back, isn't she? She won oh, it last. Sure. Year. No, I'm. I'm so. really checked out the the list and, yeah, and I think she's yeah. coming back. Yeah, she obviously stormed it last. Yeah. Yeah. I think we've got Elaine as well, Elaine B Bisson, she's always yeah. there. Um, yeah, she's, she's back. And she's Nikki Spinks. Oh, uh, no, yeah, yeah, Nikki as well, I forgot about that. Yeah, I'm not sure yeah. if she's done, has she done the full spine before? Yeah, I'm sure she has, yeah. All right, okay. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I'm looking forward to just uh, getting photos with people. <laughs> 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 at the start because I won't be I won't be seeing any of them for the rest of the race that's for sure <laughs> yeah it's, it's good I'm I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to to a to a, a good week out in the hills <laughs> yeah yeah no it's, it's um is it yeah I know it's like branded Britain's most brutal but it's nice it's a brilliant race um staff and the checkpoints just great people and they, they really make it for, for the races they're a big yeah. part of it yeah so i can't wait for the checkpoints yeah that's it the, the spine the spine family that's it as, uh, as it's referred to i know this 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 year i'm kind of i'm torn because obviously i've got I, I i won my place in the in the spine uh volunteer lottery so i've oh, sort did of you? Oh, right. so i volunteered on the race for a couple of years last year i worked on the media team with will and everything and then um my name got drawn in the in the lottery, so I was like, "I've got to do it." So okay. yeah, I've always oh. wanted. To. I'm going to do it, but I'm but I'm also at the same time I'm kind of torn as well because I'm thinking, you know, with 
the all star lineup this year. It's going to be a really good race, and I'd I'd, I'd love to st- love to be on the, on the media team for it as well, <laughs> just chasing people around and being able to hide in a van from the from the rain and stuff and, and film people like I did last year. Yeah. But I've got to take I've got to take my chance while I've got it because yeah. you know Get mere mortals, mere mortals like me can't afford to do this race every year. That's for sure. Well, you're absolutely <laughs> loving it. You'll be uh, yeah. you'll be hooked as well. I mean, I bet you'll go back. <laughs> yeah, well, if I get to, if I get to the end, if I get to the finish, I've sort of said that I won't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Give yourself a week. But I've said that it. before. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we'll see. Anyway, yeah, awesome. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you, Simon. I appreciate you sort of uh, you, giving Sam. me some of your time and, and and having a chat. And um, you know, um, you're you're on my list of um of uh of wild cards for, for for winning so i'll be looking forward to seeing how you do at the, at, at the race so give 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 damo a run for his money i will yeah Next time. i'll just be throwing some beef jerky at him all the way <laughs> he'll love that yeah. <laughs> awesome thanks for coming on simon oh, cheers sam cheers mate thanks Bye now.